Uh, moving forward, uh, another big problem, you know, I talked about is the learning curve of KRED. And uh, honestly, um, sorry, I knew. Uh, you know you have learning curves with all frameworks, unless they're very widespread. You know, uh, Spring, you know, everybody knows Spring because it's so widespread, but many institutions and companies have homegrown frameworks, and you always have a learning curve there. All right. Now, the more complex the system, the, the bigger the learning curve could be or, you know, documentation, it's not great and so forth. But uh, that's just the challenge of using a framework, first of all. But some things that uh, might be coming up that could help with this. Um, my training, KREC training, is contributed to the foundation now, and that's going to be available to everyone. Um, they're working on putting it up. Uh, the, the videos and the exercises and all the material and stuff. So it's going to be kind of a training area for Rice. Um, so that will be available for all your new developers. Uh, we're talking about this. We want to get started with these kind of shorter how-to videos. You know, they're really popular. Um, some of the new uh, client side frameworks and so forth that just hit a specific thing and just short one to two minute videos about how to get some particular thing done. Um, and um, the our, our current uh, environment, demo environment, is going to be replaced with a quality design guide. And this is coming from the UXI project, um, which will have their UIM uh, mixed in with our code examples. And I think that's going to be a, an improved learning um, resource for developers as well once that's integrated in. So that that'll be coming up, you know, over the next year or so as well. Did you have a question? Um, <clears throat> a general question is like the UXI and how that's going to be influencing KRAD and how the different projects are going to be working together. Because I know in the latest upgrade, um, a lot of COEUS changes came into the um, a lot of the base styling, yeah. which altered a lot of the KS styling we had in place. Yeah. And how those issues are. Yeah. Working. Can I hold on to that to the last section working with the framework? And yep. I, I, I had that exact topic. Excellent. Jerry, before you move on, um, <clears throat> for, the, for the housing videos, one of the things that um, I think a lot of people would be helped by is I've seen you build screens in KRAD, and you're really good at it. You're super fast at it. You have your tooling set up and your IDE really mm -hmm. nicely. I think having that out there would be super helpful. And yeah. I think a lot of devs suffer from I'm just writing XML all day, and, and, yeah. and having the tooling that you have on their environment and being able to use it the same way you do would be super helpful because, yeah. okay. like I said, I've seen you build screens and you can build them really quickly. Okay. That's a, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Definitely. Cool. Anybody else have any suggestions on this? Yeah. I don't know how many of the other K, K quality products, uh, you know, each of them have their own environment, but I think I think people just sort of say, what are the iconic uh, screens that they're using? And they like, well, here's a, you know, a simple screen you guys are using in KS, and here's how you kind of hook it up for real, so that so that K's person can say, oh, it's not just you know sports or food or you know, sort of <laughs> play application. It'll be yeah. something you, you you've seen and yeah. you already do, even if it's a light light version of that yeah. application. Because then people, oh, I. I can directly use this example in my code. Yeah, yeah, and um, that's another point I had. I noted this later, but um, somehow if we, could, if we could talk about. Um, uh, I hear you know a lot that uh, that you know uh, developers get a design from a designer and they they have a hard time figuring out how to implement that in KRAD. Uh, if we could get some kind of a feed, feedback loop going on when that happens. Developer can let us know, and we could look at that with them, and possibly build that as an example for others to learn from. Uh, that would really help us learn that, that you know, the, you know, in the real world, what are some of the challenges with the designs, and I mean, we could, you know, build. I think that would be a helpful resource as well. Maybe that's something for us to talk about, you know, that, and when you guys have to do overrides and stuff, um, you know, that will just help us improve the framework at that end and extend the extending of that, but. That's, let's talk a little bit more about that in the last section here. Um, stability, um, quality students really have some good suggestions here that's going to really help out. First, the daily integration, just trying to pull more frequently and deal with smaller batches. Um, 
we're going to try to do a much better job with documenting uh, impacts, and the US UXI project is, is working to improve their communication of, of impacts and changes <laughs> as well. Um, technical debt. So this is kind of a, a big guy here. Um, so I'm going to focus on the big issues, not the, the small bone nitty gritty. So uh, one of the big areas that we have a lot of debt, I think, you know, KRAS been in there four years now, and that's plenty of time to get lots of technical debt. Uh, so <clears throat> the web ass assets, the CSS, and the JavaScript, and the theme builder. What we'd like to do there is start a working group. I, I don't have a name yet. I just call it UI Dev Working Group. Um, hope we're going to get our first meeting soon. We have a million this <laughs> now. And um, there are a few things, um, and then for, you know, we'll, we'll define as a group what we're going to do, but some of the things I had in mind is, first, we would pull the web portion of KRAD that includes all this, these assets, these resources, into its own project, okay, and hopefully get that project in GitHub right off the bat. And, and this group would kind of work on some various things here. Uh, one, probably a complete rework of the CSS. Um, standards of how the CSS is built. How, how can we build it in such a way that it's, uh, you know, extensible by the K KS and what should go in there and so forth. So really focus it on the CSS. Um, uh, JavaScript as well. CSS would probably be the first go and then we, Move on to more uh, JavaScript. How, how do we want to? Um, what kind of module system we want to have? How do we break it out? How do we want to load that? Um, looking at the templates, and um, really, I think dropping our current theme builder, which is a tool you can use to kind of package your uh, CSS and JavaScript, dropping that to with some replacement that uses some of the newer. Uh, front end build tools. But I don't have any, we'll decide in that working group what that would be. Um, so that's, that's a lot, you know, but, um, really hoping, cause there's a couple problems up to this point. Um, we on the development side have been really hoping that the UXI project would kind of take ownership of that. But th they're really just, you know, have a lot, lot going on right now, and they really, most of their skill set is um, that, you know, kind of high-level designer skill set, uh, not necessarily the coding, um, UI de developer kind of skill sets. However, a college student, you guys have, you know, really good, re you know, a lot of expertise there. Uh, so the, the goal behind this working group was to try to get where the college student team, the UI devs in particular, can contribute more to making this better. And uh, that's really the main goal of this. And getting a project where they can get to the, the code, um, they can make changes, they can see what changes are happening from UXI and from RICE that could be impacting to them, you know, and we can start you know, defining our strategies and our standards across these various areas. So that's a really important working group um, that I think is going to have a big impact over the next, you know, year or so. Uh, and then, um, what I, again, don't have the name for this one either, but the KRAD Architecture Working Group. So this is looking more long-term. Uh, what, where do we want to be with this development framework? Um, are we on the right path with how we're building things currently using Spring? You know, our, our choice of tools that we're building off of and architecture. So, um, I already mentioned this, that this is being, uh, initialized from the Rice team and our architecture team. And we develop a community survey that's going to go out. From that, uh, we're going to propose a working group to KTI or TRC. Um, it's going to focus on 
one of the most important things from our community, but it's likely to include things like, um, you know, the current architecture of KRAD, its life cycle, um, the use of Spring, how rendering's done, you know, client side MVC, you know, all those kind of big picture things of the KRAD architecture. It's likely what that's to include. When you say life cycle, are you talking about the, like the KRAD release life cycle, or are you talking about component life cycle? Yeah, the component view life cycle. Yeah, the architecture really. Yeah, this is a group really focused on the architecture for that. And, um, you know, the working group, it's going to be open to people who are interested in it. And, um, again, really the goal of that is to decide what, where we want to go with this and to get a proposal back to the TRC. Um, so those two working groups um, are really going to drive kind of the future, I think, of the KBAD architecture and where we're going with things. Any questions? How do you work with the KPI and the TRC? I thought those were just These are subcommittees. Subcommittees, yeah. The, the proposals from this will go back to those groups.